Hello and welcome back to the channel. Um, as promised, this is my second. This is the second video in a series that I did on um, React Native and Ionic Framework. Uh, basically, what I built was a multi-step wizard to capture information. So, for example, you can enter information on, uh, for step one. You get to step two. We have a little progress bar. We've implemented React Hook Form for field verification. Um, and then we just capture all the information all the way through the app. Um, so this one on the left here is Ionic. For those who are familiar, you can just tell by the look and feel. I haven't tried to customize the UI to hide it. And this is the one on the right is uh, React Native. They both basically do the exact same thing. Um, I'm not here to pick one over the other. I'm just here to show how similar they are and how in most cases, um, it's to the end user, not the developer who's looking for the difference, but in most cases to the end user, it's going to be extremely challenging for them to even tell the difference. Um, so you can see if I go back here, there's a slight um, difference in the navigation. See, if I go forward, you can see how to the left, there's a little bit of the window behind it that you can see, um, which I noticed that here when I actually... I just noticed you can see it if you're looking really hard here on the React Native application. But at the end of the day, you can see for the most part, the animations are, are, are good enough. I mean, they're similar enough that um, the user working every day with the solution is not going to be saying, oh my God, look how bad that navigation is. Oh my God, look at that lag. I mean, it, it works. It's beyond acceptable. In fact, I think it's Clearly, it's obviously um, production ready because there are thousands of applications that have been deployed using Ionic Framework. And similarly, there are thousands of applications that have been deployed using React Native. Um, it just comes down to what your preference is. Um, you can look at the previous video to see the code walkthrough on the Ionic Framework app. I'm about to do a code walkthrough on the um, React Native solution. Um, both applications, projects are checked into my GitHub repo and the links will be included um, in the video description so you can just check them out yourself. I, as I've stated multiple times, I have no particular preference for one over the other. I do use Ionic more because that is what my company does. We build web and mobile solutions for clients. Uh, most of our clients, uh, when they come to the table, they just want an app. They don't say, give me an Ionic app or give me a React app. If someone does come in and say, give me an Ionic app, then we'll build them an Ionic app. If someone comes in and says, build me a React Native app, then we build a React Native app. Um, but we're not trying to force a client one way to the other or to the other unless they ask our opinion. And usually if they ask my opinion and they are a small business or a startup just starting up with limited capital, I will push them towards Ionic Framework. And because to me, I just think for their dollar, you're going to get more value out of an Ionic Framework solution than you're going to get out of a React Native solution. And some people might argue about that, but at the end of the day, I just think it is less expensive to hire, maintain, and support JavaScript developers than it is to do for React Native developers. And so if my clients have are on a tight budget, I'm going to push them towards Ionic Framework. So that's all I have to say about that. Now let's take a look at uh, some of the React Native code, and I'll touch on what some of the differences are um, when I implemented the React Native solution versus when I implemented the Ionic Framework solution. All right, so let's get to the code. And as usual, please make sure you like, subscribe, share with your friends, give some suggestions on some other content you'd like to see. Thanks. All right, so here we are in the React Native app. Let's go back, back. Go. Uh, all right, so the code. This is just to set up. This is a um, Expo application that was built using Expo init. Um, we installed the same packages that we installed for the Ionic Framework solution. So there's a React hook form that you can use uh, for React Native, uh, and and the pull state library also works in React Native. The difference here is, I mean, one difference here is that to find a solution that was similar to um, Ionic Frameworks components, I used, um, what is it, React Native Paper, where did that go? React Native Screens, React, mm. yeah, here, React Native Paper. So this is a quick look at React Native Paper. 
it has a pretty decent library. It has all the basic components that you can uh, expect that you can look for. Here's kind of um, also just to let you know this is pure material design. It can be themed, so it's it's pretty good, and uh, you know it it has all the components that you want. So, like I said, I was looking for something that, to me, compared to the components that you get out of Ionic Framework. Just a difference, that you know, is that the Ionic Framework components on iOS looks like iOS, and on Android looks like Android, so it's not tied specifically to material design on both platforms. Okay? So, uh, back to the application. So, let's just kind of step through this, in the, and we'll talk about some of the things we had to do that's different. So, inside, let me give us some more room here. So inside of the app.js for your source code, as you can see in um, the Ionic solution, we're basically using React, um, React Router. Here, they, there's a, React Native has its own um, navigation, and it has this kind of navigation container. Then it has different type of navigators you can use. This is a stack navigator. They have a draw navigator. I think there's also a tab navigator. I forget exactly what they call that. But that is one difference is just basically how you manage the um, navigation to the application. Um, Ionic, it's more web-based. React Native, it's got its own way of handling that. I know that React Native is moving towards more of a page um, a page based routing similar to what you see in like Next.js and React and Nuxt, where you just create the pages and based on the um, path of the page, navigation just works like that. But that is one difference here. Um, so the idea is everything sits inside this navigation, uh, inside this navigation container. And then for the stack, you just kind of list the screens and you just get this kind of um, behavior where, um, let me go back. When you switch from step one to step two, you're just basically like stacking the pages one on top of another. Nothing very complex here. It's pretty straightforward. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I don't think it's too much of a challenge for someone to wrap their head around, around it. Um, another thing that you'll notice that's different here is, you know, the styles are created as an object within the um, component. So this is a styles component, and um, we take the styles and... Um, and why is the styles component even in here? Because it's not being used. Uh, but I'll show it to you on another page. So here in the app, we set up the stack navigation to navigate back and forth. We've, and that's pretty much all we've done here. Oh yes, we did have to wrap the whole thing with the paper provider to get React, to get uh, React paper working properly. So that's the app.js. And then we'll look at step one screen. Pretty much the way all these screens are handled are the, are the exact same way. Um, we just have UI components that you can enter content in, and then we have the ability to validate against. Other than that, there's really no difference, except when you get to the last one, where, as you can see, I navigate through, navigate through, it basically summarizes everything that, you, um, that you've done. Um, so let's go back, go back. Go back and we're back to our page. Okay, uh, one thing that was different between Ionic and React Native was here as I navigate through, I d they both automatically manage the navigation stack for you and so they provide the back button up here at the top if necessary. On Ionic, it's just a UI component that I just did put in the um, header. In React Native, you have to actually take it out. So this code right here, this React use layout effect, it will, by setting header left to null, it basically removes it from being set there default. So that's what's going on with this piece of code. Um, this code here for um, setting up React hook forms, exact same as in, as in Ionic Framework. Um, this is, we're using pull state here to manage our state. This gets the default values out of our store. Let's take a quick look at our store. Full state's a very, you know, it's it's a, I won't say it's a basic, but it's a lightweight store that you can manage um, state within your application. You set up this object store, and then you're able to get the information out of it and set information in it. I'll include a link in the bio to um, pull state. Also, I go into it in a bit more detail in the um, Ionic application.
So the basic idea is, as you can see, these are all the fields that are needed within the application. The store keeps track of all of them so that irregardless of which page I'm on, I can just access them from the store and get the most recent data. Um, so let's close out of my store. Um, I say I'm a lot. Uh, so what we're doing here with React Hook Form is we're getting our default values out of our store. We're setting them so that they can be rendered appropriately on the page. And then we have some functions that we need to get from uh, the use form. The handle submit is basically how we verify the data, validate the data, and determine if we're going to actually submit the form or if we're going to um, determine the errors and then do UI render them. Control is how we is what we need to pass to. <clears throat> Let me just hop to that. On in because this is the difference between React Native and the web. On the web, most web components you can just handle directly with the register on React Hook Form. And let me see if I can show you that. All right, so here we're in a, um, a web-based solution. And you can see with these IOTIC items to register them, I'm right here, to register them to work with React Hook Form, we just need to do this register, we give it the name, and then we determine um, whether it's required or not. Here in uh, React Native, we have to wrap the component in this controller component, pass it control, and then we kind of define the rules um, on the controller. And then what needs to happen is that the controller passes um, callbacks to specific events on the um, input element, which you could then utilize. So what's happening here is we're getting our text input, and then with our text input on blur, we're just calling the controllers on blur. And then on change, we're calling the controllers on change because it's straightforward. There's nothing magical that you need to do there. And then down here on the bottom, um, React took form will determine if there's errors, and then we're able to render the error if necessary here. So that's that's one of the different another one of the differences between the two, but otherwise we use the handle submit the exact same way we um, we do with Ionic Framework. One of the things that I've done here in um, React Native is, let's see, in my step two, what I've done is I've, I've created kind of my own component to manage React Hook form into text input. It was just cleaner this way. As you can see, um, where is it? I think it, I've kept it down here. This is just a lot of code that I was just repeating over and over again, and I just wanted to show this is a way. It might not be the best solution, but it is a way to just create a component to kind of manage this input, um, this input. I only did it in this step. I could have, I could have utilized this component across all the pages, but I just wanted to leave it here as an example. And then um, let's see, what do we have anything different on step three? Yeah, on step, which one asks for the age? I think step one asks for the age. Yeah, on step one it asked for the age and I wanted the age to just be a number. So one of the things that I did here was I just set the keyboard type to numeric. So the only thing that the user could enter was a number. Um, there was, I couldn't find a way with this text input control to just tell it its type is a number as opposed to in HTML, you just set the input type to be a number and it won't let the user enter anything else in other than a number. So there's one thing different here and it's this is use is focused and it's a, hook that you get that lets you know, is this current page in focus? And what I'm doing here is I'm tracking, I'm tracking the progress um, inside my store. And so what I'm doing here is whenever the focus changes, if this page is the top page, then what I want to do is I want to make sure that the progress is zero because I'm on the first page. And as you can see on the second page, I do the exact same thing where where if this is when the second page is in focus, I move the progress to 33, and on the third, I move it to 66. And then in the final page, I set the progress to 100, so we know it's done. And that's this is the basic application. I might kind of continue on with this series and maybe add some sort of beta database to the back end, maybe Superbase or Firebase to kind of show how that works and what the difference are between the two. But it's really, you know, in, in summary, because so I don't want this to go on too much longer. All I'm saying is that it's really just a preference, um, in my opinion. 
yes, there'll be some cases where uh, because React Native is using that um, is using native components for some of its UI, it will make a difference. But I believe in most cases you can provide value to your clients leveraging Ionic Framework. And so you just do you. I'd, I'm not in the middle of these arguments of which one is better, which one is worse. I just think you need to do as I do, which is what works best for you and your team. There's a lot of chat out there, people who are just sitting at home hacking stuff on their own. And yeah, do whatever the hell you want to do. Um, but I have a company. I have a team. I need to figure out what's the most efficient way to leverage the resources that I have access to and for me to sustain my business, uh, provide value to my clients and still make money to feed my family and you know make money um, to pay my employees. And at this point where my company is right now, Ionic Framework is our primary tool to do that. So um, leave your thoughts, comments below. Thanks for checking out the video and I will talk to you later. Bye.